talk with you. Um, I think that, uh, you know, uh, I think I'm more nervous around, um, you know, because it, it, like you do meet people at these conventions or uh, when you're doing stand up comedy or when you're out of the house that are fans and they're enamored with your, they like that you are who you are. And that's a, and that feels good. And then, but I always do this thing. Well, what is the next thing that happens? Because I know it's going to be more complicated than, you know, and and uh, and how do I not look uh, like I'm taking advantage of somebody, uh, right. you know? But I do I do find that people uh, this so I can speak about women a little bit. They're not as uh, naive or uh, uh, you know. In the day, it was sort of about this thing, and they're because I know the moms at school. They're just there's some that don't have time. They they got time for this. Let's get it going. And then they're they're off and they work out. They do all this shit that I need to do. And they take they got this kid here, this kid here, this kid here. They're fucking badass. And they do hook up once in a while. They do that thing like for them. Yeah. And it's not a long, you know, flowery, you know, you don't have to I don't think you have to make them promises that listen we will live forever <laughs> they're not interested they're not interested in, in the that old game you know my biggest move was being able to marry people at one time you know to go i will marry you like that seemed to be the biggest gift okay i'll spend the rest of my life with you and we will get married we'll have a big wedding and uh it'll be cool and uh and, and that just is not in the not that i would say i would not get married again you know jim cameron's been married five times and he'd always say, you write your story. You write your ending. Fuck those people. Because, you know, he's got a great thing going on uh, with Susie Amos. But it took him four other times. And, you know, I'm not looking for that. You know, I would like to meet somebody that finds me sexually attractive and is very rich. And they're very generous. And they like kids. And they really think I'm amazing and amusing. And... They're all set up. What is it about Jane Fonda that you find, you say? Well, she's sexy. You know, she's sexy, but I know her too because, you know, her politics, right? And she's a badass. And, you know, we've talked about, you know, Trump sent the Secret Service to my house. Nixon sent him to her house. You know, I just respect her that she's out there, you know, everything. You know, I, I, I just... You know, I respect her. I mean, Dolly Parton is very attractive. You know who was very attractive, who was very sexy, was Florence Henderson. I shit you not, like, she was fucking A-game. Like, and I've talked to other dudes about it where we tell private, they go, do you ever see any older uh, and people are like, fucking Florence Henderson, I met her at this thing. Like, she's a, you know, I'm going to tell you a, a, a story for your show that does not make me look like the greatest guy, but it, but it's kind of sweet. Cloris Leachman, I, I did her last movie, and I loved her so much. You know, she's from Iowa. And she's a brilliant actor. I respect her. I really looked out for her. In fact, Jennifer Tilly, who played my wife, filmed the moment we met. That I sat down at the dinner table, and Cloris was my mother-in-law right here, and it's very intimate. And I really looked out for her, and it was such an honor to work with her. Right, and her daughter was her handler uh, uh, the, uh, in the movie. And one night uh, we wrapped and then Cloris had a bedroom. We were filming at a house. So her dressing room was a bedroom and she got to sleep on the bed. And her daughter is coming in. Her daughter is very, very nice, very cute. And she says, uh, I just want to tell you how much it means to me that you're taking such good care of my mother. And, and I go, well, of course, I love her. And she, we hug each other and I hugged her and my hands she didn't have underwear on. I could feel that thing. I didn't mean to touch her on. I was like, oh my God. I'm so, so I'm so sorry. She goes, no, it's okay. And for a second, I looked at her mom there and I was like, if I push her mom over, then we can get this thing going right here. <laughs> I was, I went from worship, which I do, Cloris Leachman, to thinking about putting a coat over her head so her daughter and I could hook up real quick. <laughs> that, it, that's how my mind you know, I went from being the most gracious, wonderful guy to, wait a minute, I wonder if we can move your mom. <laughs> so, that at, that least your, at least your mind works quickly, right? It does. It, that is, it's a relief. 
you know, if you've been through a, a went through an especially nasty divorce last time because it involved kids, and I had to go to court and custody court, and I had to do all this stuff, and and anything involves something you your kids because that's the thing you love the most. That's a that, and if they know that and they want to hurt you, they're like, oh, that's the thing I'm going to try and take away from you. I'm going to say, but um, that feeling with Cloris's daughter was the first time I went. Oh, I still have. Uh, I, I could still have sex. <laughs> I can, no, it's still going. There's something, you know, some men, as we know, have that all the time and they get fucking in trouble. You can't, uh, they're, they, they get, you can't count on them because that's right. all they got. They're like fucking living on red. The head of their penis is like the fucking razor's edge. They're just, you know, and it's sex addiction. And you got to find the, but I think having sex is probably a good thing. You know, calms and, you down, right? Right. You know, but I have to say, don't put down jerk it off because let me tell you something. It's and I do recommend this to young guy. I guess some of young guys are like, oh, we got there. I want to fucker. I say, do yourself a favor, jerk off before you go out because then you won't get in quite as much trouble. You probably won't get into a fight, and then you don't go for, you know, you pace yourself. <laughs> you pace yourself a little bit with the partying, with the, with women, with men, whatever. You make a little bit better decisions because young people make terrible decisions. I know because I was a young person. So there's that. That's your advice for all the young men out there. Yeah, or men in general. Yeah. Speaking about you mentioned politics and Jane Fonda, talk to me about this whole, you know, listen, when you think Tom Arnold, you think a lot of things you don't think, you know, breaking the story of like Jerry Falwell Fa- Fa- and the pool boy and Michael Cohn. How does this all come about? I mean, I know you were doing your own like anti-Trump right. analysis. Well, I, you know, I knew Trump, don't Trump for almost 40 years. So, you know, this guy's bad news. Like, you know, he would, you know, I put up a clip. He came, he came on my sports show. First of all, Roseanne and I did a special at Trump Castle. Maybe it was a casino at the end of the 80s. And he was like, listen, I have a friend that has a, uh, a what is a Bugatti or whatever? some kind of $3 million car. And he will, it, we'll bring this into, and then I'll drive Roseanne onto the set. I'll be her chauffeur. So I'm like, okay, that sounds great. And now I realize he's in the show. <laughs> now he's in the show. And then later, uh, I was talking to HBO, we we're settling up some, uh, some bills. They go, the guy that drove that car up lives on a farm in New Jersey. He boxed it up. He drove it up here and pr- Trump promised to pay him 40 grand and he didn't pay him. And so I thought, well, that's hilarious. I'll pay him because that's a hilarious Donald Trump story. But that's really, that's his business, whatever. And he would come on my sports show and we had young girls in the audience. Like, you know, we'd have a high school or a junior high dressed in uniforms. And there's, and he's like, hey, what? And you can see him on the show go to me. Hey, what the, what's going on with these guys? So there's that. But it was fine when he was just Donald Trump. I've been to the Playboy match with him. He took me after the show to meet his new girlfriend, Karen McDougal. Uh, and then I realized, oh, shit, his wife is here, too, Melania, and his daughter. Like, he has no problem, you know. And and uh, and so, but I thought, that's all fine. You know, the sports show, there's a lot of guys involved with sports or, you know, entertainment that are like that. But then when he started talking about running for office, I was like, oh, shit, this is the worst idea ever. And so I, you know, I, I did my best, you know, I had friends that worked on the Celebrity Apprentice and uh, they had tape of, I mean, he, cause he, the thing about the Celebrity Apprentice is it's a game show. And in America, if you host a game show, you have to be might the whole, from the time you get out of the car to the time you leave, because there was a game show scandal in the fifties and, uh, and people cheated. 